Hello everyone and welcome to the second week of the trims, special trims, vintage twin trims prompt. Um, so all my trims are stitched down. I've stitched down this one which I'd only partially done in the last video. And I felt like it looked a little bit plain. So what I've done, I've actually sketched a flower on top of this lace and some leaves and a and a flower bud up there that I'm going to embroider with it's just a navy thin Appleton wool um, and I got the flower inspiration from Maggie Holmes who I really like her scrapbooking paper and stuff like that so it's kind of a Maggie Maggie Holmes style of flower so all I'm going to do is just backstitch the whole design. I've drawn the design on with a friction pen as well, by the way. So just a rough sketch. Hopefully it looks all right once I've stitched it down. So I'll show you a little bit of stitching. Then I'll pop off the video and I'll finish the stitching so that you can see what it looks like. So just a back stitch, super simple. And if I wanted to um, thicken up the line a little bit, I could whip the back stitch. So loop the threads in and out of each stitch, which neatens it up. Sometimes like when I do lettering, I quite like doing a whip back, whipped back stitch. You can variegate the thread, do a different colored thread. It kind of gives you a candy cane look when you do it like that. Or you can do it in the same color thread and you can't even notice it and it just kind of neatens up the line so let's get it all stitched down and then we'll see what it looks like so I think it's basically like it's a rose but it's one of the ones what are the roses called that don't have a lot of petals like this only has five I can't remember or actually it's almost the bud looks like a rose but maybe the the flower looks a little bit like a camellia but anyway we'll see how we go so I'm actually on holidays um, just just this week started holidays for a couple of weeks which is good because once you get to the end of term, I'm sure there's quite a few of you I know are teachers out there or have been teachers. Um, it's just, it's really exhausting and you just need a break, even just a mental break. And the good news is I have no marking. Finally, got all my marking done last week. Submitted so marks can be sent out to boys, um, which is wonderful. So I have no marking to do these holidays. And next term, I actually go into a full term of just practical lessons. Normally I do a mixture of prac and theory. In fact, probably a little bit more theory than prac because um, my year 12s are basically theory lessons and, and that's a large bulk of my teaching load is year 12, the, the boys in their final year. And they're, they're finished. You know, Jamie and his cohort of peers have just finished so all they've got coming up is exams so I actually don't have any theory because what we do in our final term of the year which is term four for us we schedule it so that all our units of work are practical unit of works because it is starting to get warm in Sydney in fact on the weekend it's going to be really hot I think Sunday is going to be like 35 degrees which is pretty hot and the weather heats right up in term four, so we like to get the kids in the pool and to play to play different sports with them. So it's going to be quite a nice way to end the year. Normally I would have a year 11 class, which is the second last year of school, and they begin year 12 um, work in term four. But this is the first year in, a, in quite a while that I don't have year 11. Um, it's kind of year 11 and year 12, uh, we've got quite a lot of teachers that can teach that level. And so you kind of have to share the classes around. And I've been lucky for several years now um, in having two, both a year 11 and a year 12, 
that class numbers are limited. Like in total, we have five senior classes and we have, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six people who can teach it, who are, who are basically um, experienced at teaching that level. So you have to kind of share things around a bit. So this year, I didn't get to have a year 11, but next year I should pick up another one. And we've got a new syllabus. So actually there's not, just thinking, it's not starting next year, it's starting the year after, but we've got a lot of planning to do for a new syllabus. So yes, there is some work I can do these holidays, but there's nothing I have to do. So that means I can have some creative time and time to encourage Jamie to do some study as well. All right, I'm just going to do this first petal. And then what I think I'll do is I'll switch off the camera and just stitch it because uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. It'd be pretty boring watching me stitch like this for a long period of time. And then I'll turn the video back on and show you the petal done. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And I might, um, if depending on how long this takes me, I might do um, a little bit more embellishing as well, add a few more bits and pieces in tonight too. Okay, and these flowers have like a little... Thing like this. Don't know what it's called. So doing the sketching on here in the blue friction pen means that you can't really see it once I've stitched over in the navy blue thread. Okay, so that's my first petal. Then I've got one, two, three, four more to do. Some leaves I've drawn on. And the, maybe it's a rosebud, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to turn off the video and I'll come back and show you once I've done a bit more stitching. See you soon. All right, so flower done. I'm happy with how that turned out. Um, and now I had the... Um, navy blue seam binding that I wanted to add. I was originally going to add it there, but I'm going to add it along here and just gather and stitch. So I'm using the same navy Appleton wool. I've already just done one stitch just to hold it in place. Hang on, Let's let me get this up here. And then it's, it's quite messy and crinkled already, and I want to keep it that way, I'm not smoothing it out. So I'm just gathering it up, doing just little stitches, even twisting it. Just doing some little stitches and this navy thread or wool should blend in quite nicely. So just a crinkled little extra trim across the edge. And then, once I've done this, I might just add a couple more little bits and pieces, start filling in some of my gaps. And um, then that will be it for this week. And we'll be ready for next week, which will be a new prompt reveal. So that'll be my videos first next week. I'll reveal the next two prompts. And... Um, 
we're definitely starting to fill up our piece. Now, I, I, I want to keep some white in between mine. Um, I know some people are completely filling their piece up, and that's fantastic. It looks great. Um, I'll be interested, interested to see how you are. Uh, some of you fit those last prompts in because there's a few more to go still. Um, but anyway, you could always start a new one or add some more fabric. Or pick and choose which prompts you like and leave some out. Lots of options. Okay, sorry, I'm a bit quiet. I actually, <laughs> I think I've told you this before, I usually like to be quiet when I create. That's why I find it hard to chat through my videos. I don't want to chat often. Um, and sometimes I add my music, but a few of you have expressed that you don't like it. Well, if you don't like it, just mute it, because sometimes I just don't feel like talking. Especially if I've had a really busy day at work and I'm tired and I don't know what I want to talk about. But anyway, I put the music in there when I don't feel like chatting. Alright, so I actually don't mind the music. Sometimes I watch videos and you're kind of half watching, half creating at the same time. They've got a bit of music going and I just listen to it and look up every now and then. I know Rachel doesn't like the music because I think she said it in one of her videos. But each to their own. Everyone can make their videos however they want. It's up to them. We should just appreciate that people take the time to share stuff with us. I've been watching a lot of um, Robin... And I, now I'm having mental blank and I can't think of her last name because I've just signed up to her. Um, Rachel and I both have. Sorry, Rachel, I did enable you on that one. Um, it's called Robin's Nest and she is an art journaler. And for the life of me, I just have forgotten her proper name, but it's R-O-B-E-N. So we've signed up to her, um, her online sort of group that she's got going you have like a monthly subscription and she has some great art journaling because art journaling is something I want to do I've doubled in it a little bit but I really want to do more of it so um yeah I was, my point was that she's got some great videos I love watching her videos I've watched heaps in the last couple of weeks I just love her style and sometimes she just does a create with me and she she creates a page in her art journal and I just enjoy watching it. And, you know, I'm thankful for people like that who are willing to share their knowledge and their advice. And, you know, it really doesn't cost us anything other than just having your normal internet connection. And it's lovely when people are so generous with their knowledge, like, like Robin. So I say thank you to Robin. I'm sure she doesn't watch my videos, but... Thank you to her and to other people like her that are really generous with their time. All right. So the next thing was this little embroidery that I cut out the other week. And I definitely want to add this because I love it. I know, as I said before, it's not exclusively the colours that I'm using. But I think I might stitch around it in the same thread. Um, not exclusively the colours of um, blues, reds and sort of neutral tones, but I really like it and I think it actually goes in quite nicely. So I'm going to stitch that down and I'll use the same thread and I will just do an overcast stitch around the outside.
All right, so let's just pin it, pin it in place. Next thing, am I on screen? Not really. Let's get down a little bit further. Okay, so this is what I'm referring to. Stitching it with the Appleton wool. Sometimes it's hard to stay on camera. I remember when, Rach, when you were first making videos, it used to be so funny. You were so far off camera. And then you put in some little guidelines, washi tape on your mat. And now you don't have any problems at all. I'm amazed by the people that can just zoom right in. I've only zoomed in a little bit, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. But um, some people zoom right in and they still keep themselves on camera, which is impressive because it is easy to drift off to the side. All right, so overcast stitch, just straight little stitches and I'll go around the whole outside. Oops, that one was a bit crooked. And that one, <laughs> it's because I'm on a funny angle. All right, I'm gonna pop off the camera and I'm gonna come back and show you this stitch down. Be back in a sec. So my embroidery stitch down and then I've just been playing around with some other bits and pieces. So I thought I'd add in some of these old Suffolk puffs. Little piece of trim, lace, don't know what it is. And I've got a big French label there. So that's the kind of stuff I'm going to be adding in the little gaps. I'll probably add something in there, like just putting things everywhere. But anyway, I'm not going to stitch them down on camera tonight. Um, because um, I've done enough for the moment. Um, but I hope you're liking how it's turning out so far. And I will see you again next week for our new prompt. Thanks for watching. Bye.